all of you are welcome in the house of the Lord. Turn to someone and say, you are welcome in the house of the Lord. Fantastic. I am Dr. Reverend Sean Moore. I am the residing pastor here at Living Spirit Church. It is in the resurrection that Christ has restored our life. Christ will come again in all glory. In baptism, Lisa put on Christ. So on Christ, Lisa will be clothed in glory. Here and now, friends, we are God's children. We do not know what tomorrow will bring. But we do know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him. Amen. At this point, we will be singing the song, How Great That Art Together.
<clears throat> I'm the youngest in the family, so I'm supposed to be the most emotional. Um, first of all, thank you, Pastor Moore, for welcoming us here. Um, for those who didn't know, this was Lisa's church for many years. She lived just down the street, and uh, it's an important part of her life the last 15 years or so. And um, it was amazing because it allowed her to uh, be in congregation with inspiring people, which was always very important to Lisa. And it also allowed her to express herself uh, with her with her values by showing up nearly every Wednesday for for supper, for community supper. She also learned music here. She was a part of the drum group for a while uh, and made some amazing friends. So it's really special that we get to be here and that you all made the journey on such a challenging winter day. Um, just want to say a few things that are important to me about my sister. The first thing is how dedicated Lisa was to our family. She always sent me birthday cards and Christmas cards. She would clip out articles from the newspaper that were inspiring to her that she thought I would like. We talked, I live out of town, but she still called almost every week, if not more. And towards the end of her life, as she was in a nursing home, she'd say things like, oh, I'm not doing enough to help the kids, or I'm not doing enough to help mom. And I, I wanted her to know, and I made sure that she knew that we're all here because she kept our family together, even after tough times. So dedication is one of the most important things I think about Lisa. The second thing about Lisa is inspiration. Um, I think those who've known her her whole life know that she's had a tough life. Health challenges and other challenges. We lost our dad when she was in high school. I was in elementary school. That's a really tough thing to go through. But unlike a lot of people that you're inspired by, you're inspired because they went through tough times. That's inspi inspiring enough. But the most inspiring thing about Lisa is how she went through tough times. N Never bitter. The first thing that my wife, Laura, and I said after Lisa passed is that no matter how hard her life was, she was never bitter. She was always appreciative of family, of friends, people who were there for her. And that, to me, is what's most inspiring about Lisa, is how you can be dealt a tough hand and always approach it with love, uh, with dedication to your family and friends. So she had went through a lot of challenging times, but what's inspiring to me is not that she survived those challenging times, it's how she survived them. And to me, that's what I'm going to remember about Lisa, and that's what I'm going to continue to be inspired about. If When I go through tough times, I'm going to remember how Lisa went through them and to never be bitter. That was, that was beautiful, Dan. Beautiful tribute to Lisa. I don't know who put me second on the list. I should um, make a mental note, but I'll forget <laughs> that I shouldn't go after Dan, whether it's 
cross country skiing, beauty pageant, speaking in front of groups. I'm switching gears here just a little bit. Um, just like me, Lisa had a great sense of humor. It's something we may not have noticed or recognized in the past couple years because things were so tough for her and she couldn't express herself in that way. But she had a wicked sense of humor. And um, for example, April Fool's Day. She loved April Fool's Day. Um, especially she looked forward to Dan's April Fool's Day jokes every year. And admittedly, she was, she, Dan got her a couple times. He got all of us. Um, but eventually, sometime in, in March, she would, she would call me or we'd talk and she'd ask, what do you think Dan's going to do this year? And she wanted to be ready. And one year, she really got him. Dan uh, sent a desperate email to the family. With an, uh, with an attached letter. It was a, a ginned up cease and desist letter from the Chinese government. See, Dan's a guide, uh, eco-tourism guide out in Pacific Northwest. And um, he said it, it involved, it was about leading a group of Tibetan nationals around the Pacific Northwest and the Chinese government had demanded him to stop. And uh, so th this was, you know, April and um, just the, the previous fall, Lisa had volunteered for a local state rep, a campaign, and she knew this gentleman pretty well. And um, even like, you know, went to the house for gatherings and talk about things. And uh, so she replied to Dan and said, yeah, I, 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 I sent, I passed this letter on to Jim. And he knows Al Franken. And Al Franken was sitting on the on the uh on some committee and and Al Franken was gonna was gonna get going on it, was gonna look into it. And Dan squirmed. He really squirmed. And Lisa was giddy when she called me, I got Dan, I got Dan. And she re uh, boy did she remember that. Um we would we would also joke about having pie for dessert. Um, so sometimes, like when we're gathered over at my mom's house for dinner, one of us would look at the other one or to my mom and say, "Hey, mom, how about if we have a piece of that apple pie now?" And then we'd kind of look over at each other, see if we got, you know, because we loved pie, and um, of course there wasn't pie. You know, and but there was always just like possibility because occasionally I brought a pie or Lisa would bring a pie. So we would get each other that way. And we that joke, you know, just traveled through the years. Um, and there was one particular incident that that I think about. And that's uh, one day I uh, went to my mom's house in the evening and apparently Lisa had been there and. Uh, she had already gone home and so i got on the phone and i called lisa and i said oh too bad i you you, you know we weren't here a little longer mom and i are eating french silk pie and that was her favorite it's like oh shoot and she's like, i'm already home and i'm already in bed and i said okay that's that's fine there might be some left tomorrow 20 minutes later lisa pulls into the driveway comes through the door wearing her pajamas very disappointed that there was no no pie that that's uh that's something that i could drag out and we both did several times um she was a great sport and loved the humor she loved to be uh she loved it when people uh joked with her you know even at her expense um and uh, she could dish it back um so Many people have reached out to us in the past couple of weeks, We've gotten cards, um, 
and phone calls and emails uh, telling us how much they appreciated Lisa's friendship. Um, we heard from several people that um, what a positive attitude Lisa had. As Dan said, it, it stands out. Um, I don't, you know, I couldn't almost get it. The Constitution, you know, the, the positive attitude through a lot of tough times. Um, that's not to say she wasn't, that's not to say she was always upbeat or happy. She was sometimes sad and anxious. But like Dan said, she was never bitter. She was never bitter. And above all else, she didn't want to complain. Um, if she ever started complaining, she would catch herself and say something like, well, other people are, I'm sure there's other people in worse, in a worse situation than I am. Being nice was important to Lisa. And whether people were nice to her was a measure by which she judged different situations. For example, if she got a new job, we'd ask her, oh, how's the job, Lisa? And she'd say, she might say, oh, the people there are really nice. Not about the job, it's about the people, right? Um, same with the doctor's offices, the clinics. Oh, the staff there are all so nice. And she appreciated it. She told them so over and over again. She appreciated the things that people did for her and she always made a point to tell them so. One day, Lisa and I uh, broke my grandpa out of his nursing home in Edina for a haircut. And um, my grandpa was kind of like me. He, he liked short hair and he um, was, got crazy when his hair got anywhere near his eyes. And so, and he really appreciated after the haircut to have short hair again. So Lisa and I took him to the family barber on East 66th Street in Richfield. And um, after that, we stopped at the Dairy Queen um, on 66th Street in Edina, out there by, by Southdale. And um, my grandpa got a small cone. And at some point, with ice cream around his lips, on his face, on his chin, he looked at us and said, the perfect day, like that. It was very sweet and kind of funny. Um, Lisa and I remembered that. And just oftentimes she would say, the perfect day, you know, and we'd laugh about that. Years later, when Lisa was in the nursing home, she used those same words when I'd bring her a cold Dr. Pepper. Some of you know that Lisa really loved Dr. Pepper, um, but it was more than that. Um, she was thanking me, but she also really appreciated that I brought her that. And she often said, perfect day while she was drinking the Dr. Pepper. Lisa had surgery in May of 2021. Um, a little bit of an, an intervention on her, on her brain. Um, and right after it became clear she couldn't go live by herself. So she moved over to Walker Methodist Nursing Home on Bryant. Prior to that, she was doing regular speech and physical therapy to work on balance, coordination, memory. Um, she had a lot of doctor's appointments. She had MRIs. There were a bunch of things going on. COVID was raging and it was a very stressful time for our family. Um, one day my, uh, my boss, ask me, you know, how I, would, how I felt. And I guess I hadn't really, you know, felt about all the appointments and driving and things I was doing. And I hadn't really thought too much about it, but um, kind of out of nowhere, I said, it's, it's just a real honor to help my sister. And um, I hadn't, I hadn't thought about it because it, it wasn't something that I, 
thought was a lot of work. I mean, sometimes, you know, it was tough, but when somebody truly needs help and needs you, something kicks in, you know, it's a, ask my mom, she did that for us for how many years, you know, and, um, um, and then, and she drove Lisa, you know, when she first went through radiation at the University of Minnesota every day, five days a week or six weeks or something, um, and took her to appointments. But it wasn't, you know, it's a labor of love. And um, there were a few times when Lisa, you know, she felt bad about that. And she said she was sorry for all the, all the like work or trouble she was causing or whatever. And it's, it's kind of heartbreaking to hear that. And um, all I would have to, to, you know, my response was, would you do this for me? And it was such a ridiculous rhetorical question because Lisa, she just wanted to help people. She, she um, and as Dan said, I mean, one, one of the things about the cancer and um, not being able to get around and drive anymore was that she missed helping my mom with things and getting over to my mom's place. Um, Cause she loved that. And um, she missed coming here to this church to serve meals on Wednesday night. She, she always wanted to help. And she was, um, you know, that darn, the darn cancer got in the way. She couldn't do that. And that she wasn't just thinking about herself. She was thinking about other people. And that was Lisa. Um, so if you ever go through a person's kind of belongings, like Dan and I did when Lisa moved to Walker Methodist, um, kind of go through their stuff, um, you see their world in an unfiltered way. You see their past, the things that they thought were important enough to save, like pictures, family, friends, special Christmas cards, school papers. You see their day-to-day -day reality appointments scribbled on calendars, medications on the counter, newspapers on the floor, crossword puzzles half done, bills and to-do list. You might get a glimpse of their struggles. Self-help books that you didn't know that they were reading. and get an idea of their hopes and dreams, things they say, things they wanted to do. Lisa's refrigerator was covered with pictures, pictures of my kids. My mom, her friends, her friends' kids, dogs, the church schedule, that was her life. And then it wasn't, it was that fast. In the poem that my son Henry is about to read, you'll hear the sobering words. Meanwhile, the world goes on. Sure enough, it does. And in three days, it'll be Christmas. For those of you who are celebrating Christmas, I hope it's the best one ever. At my house, there will be sadness, of course, but there will also be joy and laughter. My family will gather at my house on Christmas Eve and on Christmas Day. And I'm sure we'll share stories about Lisa. We'll shed some tears, smile, and we may even chuckle a bit, thinking about all the jokes and the goofy things we did. Now Henry's going to come up and read that poem.
I'll have to make a mental note of who put me third. <laughs> Wild Geese by Mary Oliver. You do not have to be good. You do not have to walk on your knees for a hundred miles through the desert repenting. You only have to let the soft animal of your body love what it loves. Tell me about despair, yours, and I will tell you mine. Meanwhile, the world goes on. Meanwhile, the sun and the clear pebbles of the rain are moving across the landscapes, over the prairies and the deep trees, the mountains and the rivers. Meanwhile, the wild geese, high in the clean blue air, are heading home again. Whoever you are, no matter how lonely, the world offers itself to your imagination, calls to you like the wild geese, harsh and exciting, over and over announcing your place in the family of things. Thank you, Henry. At this time, we're going to hear words of remembrance from family, friends, and congregational members. So anyone who would like to share something, uh, please do so. I also recognize that we're going to also have a couple of poems that are going to be spoken also. Amen? I'd like to share this blessing that's also in the program that I'm sure many of you are familiar with. It's certainly important to my family um, and my Irish heritage. This is an Irish blessing that I know is important to Marlene as well. So I wanted to share it with all of you. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face. The rains fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. I have the honor to read an another verse from the program. Um, Lisa and I shared an adoration of animals and a love for James Harriet. And I enjoyed time um, when Lisa was in Walker and Mount Olivet going in and reading from um, James Harriet to her. And often she would complete my sentences for me as I was reading out loud. She knew the characters. She knew the stories. She even knew the diagnosis of the animals before I read it out, out, out loud. All things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small, all things wise and wonderful, the Lord God made them all. Okay, maybe I wasn't so clear. Uh, maybe I was. I, I don't know. I, I, this is the time for anyone to show up and to say some words of remembrance. You can, you know, anything you want to say, you want to share, you can do so now. Um, I'm Kim. Um, spent a lot of, a lot of happy memories with Lisa. Um, taking walks around uh, the lakes, um, also sharing Dr. Pepper's, sometimes going to the Five and Eat for hamburgers, which is one of her favorite places to have a burger. But <clears throat> some of my favorite memories is when she would come up um, to Sean's um, grandpa's cabin up in Wisconsin, and we would go tubing and the one time Sean was driving, I don't know who was co-piloting the boat, if he was trying to both pilot and co-pilot, sometimes he liked to do both. Lisa and I were in the tube, and uh, both of my girls were in the boat with Sean, and we had signals up at the lake that if you wanted the tube to go faster, it was two thumbs up. If you wanted to slow down, it was two thumbs down. If you wanted to stop, it was stop. Right, Dave? Two thumbs up. The one time Lisa and I were in the tube and 
Sean was going around in circles and going around in circles in Chief Lake and more and more circles. I think both of us were getting pretty dizzy. And he turns around and he's like two thumbs up. I go one thumb up. Lisa goes one thumb, thumb down. He says, well, what is it? You know, pretty soon we're going in more and more circles. And the next thing, both of us are dumped and he's coming back to get us. And that wasn't the first time today, but we laughed the rest of the day, probably the entire weekend. Um, just very, very many happy memories, picking raspberries with Lisa, with grandpa. For every two we picked, three or four went in our mouth. Um, just very, very many happy memories. Um, I will miss her greatly. I'll miss her friendship um, and her positive attitude and what she taught me um, about being positive and living life to the fullest. <clears throat> um, I'm Josh. I'm a good friend of the Moors and grew up with Lisa went to Washburn <laughs> and the uh, thing in the obituary that really stood out to me was a reference to Dave's deck at his house, which has a lot of fond memories for me. And I loved going over when his family was there and I would just plunk down like I was part of the family. And Lisa would always make space for me. And Marlene was always, always had a huge smile on her face. Um, that deck is a great place. She loved it. And I can't wait to go, uh, well, maybe a beer, but not a Dr. Pepper, but we'll negotiate on it. <laughs> but thanks, it was a um, uh, great remembrance. Anyone else? If not, please join us for our second hymn, Children of the Heavenly Father. Amen. A life of service that is so inspirational that moves beyond the grave. See, the Bible teaches that life moves beyond the grave, that the image of God that is inside of us cannot be destroyed by death. This is God's view. And of course it would be. Now our view tends to be dreadful, disappointing, and devastating. We tend to believe that we've lost the great battle. This is the reason why there are so many people who work on living a long life 
and not a Worth Field Life, not Lisa. Now, I, I didn't know Lisa, but I know of her. Amen. She had a big life, big service. Amen. She's a woman of strong faith and character. These two attributes played itself out here at Living Spirit. Now, talking to Dave and Laura and Anne and Janelle, I had a, a lot to go on. But again, Living Spirit was the place that she got to unfold her love, her compassion, and her joy. She loved Wednesday night dinners and Friday game nights. She sat one, two, three, four, fifth row, right there, correct? My fifth row on the right side? Yes? Yes. Sir, you in the peacoat there. Your name? Tom. You're sitting where Lisa used to sit. Amen. She was a great blessing in the living spirit. See, God would call Lisa fortunate. Because that's what God calls those that have passed on, the blessed. God tells us that to die with faith in the Lord is desirable. See, death is the doorway to rest from our labor. The word labor means to wear out, to work and to toil, which means our lives can be filled with difficulties, disappointments, and diseases. And yet, among all of these, Lisa faced these difficulties with a smile on her face. She's able to reshape the issue. Amen? See, we all go through pain. But we all don't have to suffer. We thank God for rest. There's a time for rest. We've worked hard. She worked hard. The word rest is a beautiful word. It means to be at ease. To be refreshed, it suggested end of work. Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 through 30 reads, Are you tired? Are you worn out? Burned out by religion? Come to me. Get away with me and I will recover your life. I'll show you how to take real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn and reinforce the rhythms of grace. I won't let anything weigh you down. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. Amen. There's no more toil for Lisa. There's no more pain for Lisa. Full freedom. Full light. In other words, it is a perfect day. Amen. Amen. We're not going to have a reading piece of my heart. Peace, my heart. Peace My Heart by Rabindranath Tagore. Peace my heart, let the time for the parting be sweet. Let it not be a death, but completeness. Let love melt into memory and pain into songs. Let the flight through the sky end in the folding of the wings over the nest. Let the last touch of your hands be gentle, like the flower of the night. Stand still, O oh beautiful end, for a moment, and say your last words in silence. I bow to you and hold up my lamp to light you on your way. Celebration of life has to include humor. Because you're not here humor, 
during this time, remembering of stories, newspaper clippings, pontoons on the boat, thumbs up, thumbs down, gardening out here, going through hardship. You have an opportunity to hear a story. I'm always interested in funerals because funerals tend to gather people who haven't seen each other for a while. Friends, uh, family, friends, they just all kind of come together to hear a magnificent story. I will ask that you don't leave here today without remembering this fantastic story and how it can impact your life. Amen? Amen. Well, if you're able to, please stand for the benediction. Eternal God, we praise you for the great company of all those who have finished their course in faith that now come to rest from labor, especially for Lisa Moore, whom you have graciously received into your presence. Grant her your peace. Light your light, let it continue to shine upon all of us and lead us towards eternal glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen.